Welcome back. So we're uh, going over uh, more earnings now and Hootco is the uh, next company on the radar. Uh, if we look at the performance in the quarter gone by, well, uh, disbursements are actually down uh, about 28%. Interest income growth and assets under management uh, came in at a healthy clip. So we've got uh, Mr. Sanjay Kulshrestha, CMD of Hootco joining in. Mr. Kulshrestha, thanks for joining in and I uh, wish you a happy Diwali to begin with. Uh, let's just try and understand, you know, how this has played out. Your disbursements have been lower this year. I mean, is there a seasonality impact? What's behind it? Because otherwise, AUM growth is up 7% sequentially. So let's talk about business growth. Uh, what are you looking at for the full year? And, uh, you know, what explains the discrepancy on disbursements in this quarter? So if you can see the uh, last year, half yearly to this half yearly, I think the disbursement has grown by 6x. And similarly, the loan book has grown by 36%. So it is generally for a financial institutions because it all depends on the pace of the project and the nature of the projects. And you have rightly said the environment and the ecosystem of the project and the progress of the project. Because we disburse funds on very, very... Uh, reimbursement kind of basis so that funds should be utilized in the project. So there is here and there, there are slightly ups and downs on quarter to quarter basis. But I think it is it is advisable, it is good that we should, uh, we should look at the figures on year to year basis. And during last year, from last half yearly to this half yearly on all the parameters, it starts from the disbursement, sanctions, borrowing, cost of funds, resolutions of the NPA, loan sanctions. I think uh, the company has done phenomenally well. Uh, our sanctions has grown by 10x. It was last year, half yearly was 7,000 figures. This year, we had achieved uh, 76,000 crores. This year, we had dispersed around 22, 21,600 against the 7,000 last year, the uh, 3,000 last year. So I think on a year-to-year basis, we are working very well. And if you will... Uh, if you will <clears throat> see uh, after the fiscal end of the fiscal, I think the results will be will, will be very very outstanding for the company. Absolutely, sir. No, no denying that. I mean, the the sort of improvement on sanctions is absolutely stunning, and even the AUM growth in this quarter. If I look at year on year Q2 over Q2 last year, then it's uh, looking very good at about 36 uh, percent. Uh, plus, I think you're talking about lending to a lot of big projects. So let's talk about overall growth of the book this year. Financial year FY25, what will your AUM growth be considering the healthy trends that we've seen in this quarter? Yeah, uh, we had started this fiscal with around 92,000 of the AUM and now we are standing at 1,11,000 uh, figure. So it is uh, more than 20% that we had already grown and uh, we had taken a very sustainable kind of target to reach uh, uh, 1,50,000 by next fiscal. And for this fiscal, we had taken a target of 1.2 lakh crores. And uh, we are comfortably well well placed to achieve this 1.2 lakh uh, crores target, looking at the 1.11 AUM as on date. So there are a lot of projects that we are discussing and there is a lot of tailwinds uh, across the Indian economy and the in Indian infrastructure to achieve that Viksit Bharat Mantra of Honorable Prime Minister. And every state had been geared up. Uh, so so a lot of projects that we are talking, it starts from the south, from AP, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, then towards the west, then they start from Maharashtra. Um, then in the central also, we are discussing in Chhattisgarh MP, then eastern side also, they are all gearing up with good infrastructure, which is cash-based, revenue-based kind of infrastructure projects that the company is working. Just to get the numbers again, you end this year at 1.2 lakh crores Ooh. and the yeah. next fiscal you are t aiming for 1.5, right? 1.5. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Prashant. Okay. Uh, sir, good morning. Uh, thanks good morning. Good morning. How are you? Uh, all well, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, festive greetings to you and your team. Uh, and uh, Same here. it's good Same. to speak with you. Thank you. Uh, let's just talk about uh, the, the yields that you are enjoying. What were yields in the second quarter, uh, sir? Uh, you know, what is the sustainable level that you're looking at? And also, if you can guide uh, us on both net interest margins and spreads uh, for F525. Yeah. Uh, I will start from the cost of funding because yield is a factor of the cost of funding. During last financial year, we had... Uh, we had been able successfully able to reduce our cost of funding and during last quarter it was only 6.99 irrespective of the higher markets and uh, the expectation of the rate cuts uh, from the rbi but i think this is a good season for the rate cuts and the fed has already started indicating and fed has already deducted uh, some 50 basis point and we are expecting more in it right? and then the indian economy indian budget the fiscal reserves everything is putting 
uh, indication that we will be going towards slightly lower cost of rates and we are continuously trying to to cut down our cost of funding and then we are also resolving our assets so that the write offs can be uh, can be available for the company to improve the bottom line and uh, we had taken the internal measures also to to see that there should not be any compliance cost or very little compliance cost so we are working on optimization of the compliance cost so i will come back to your question regarding the yields uh, we will be sustainable around 9.25 9.3 and uh, we will be maintaining that kind of yields because we are into the era where we need that infrastructure should be more viable rather than loading the cost of fund on the infrastructure and making them unviable we are working and committed that the asset should be more viable and so we are making our yield at 9.3 around 9.3% and we will be maintaining that by all the measures and uh, at the same time <clears throat> our spreads will be something around 2.25 uh, that will be maintaining and our nim will be around 3.3 3.25 i think these are the sustainable figures that we will be achieving in next couple of years okay 3.3 to 3.25 nim uh, that would be an improvement from where you are again can yes. you put some timelines to it sir uh, so I are you saying uh, 3.2 by the end of this year itself yeah by the end of because you see the company has grown by 39% during last uh, last one year so it has put pressure some pressure on the yields and the income has just started coming out of these assets so you may be you may be looking some good improvement in the quarter 3 and i think we will be settling in quarter 4 because all the loan no, books there are some the revenue are yeah yeah there uh, you know just to just to take up uh, on that point there is a news report sir, sir which suggests that the decision on including uh, not just hotco but companies like iredda uh, also under section 54 uh ec is likely on the back burner uh, and there is a little bit of dis- uh, uh, delay in the decision uh, to be made could you tell us uh, what are your thoughts on this and have you heard anything i think we are very positive about that because uh, we had already requested because finally the decision will be taken by the government and we had put in our case and uh, we are pursuing with the finance ministry we are very hopeful because these earnings are coming out of the home proceeds also only and uh, we are trying to put in that since the pmay is in uh, pmay 2.0 program is launched and uh, it is very ambitious we want that the funds the counterpart funds which will be required by the states they will be extended at the cheapest price so that it will be it will it will be the lower cost for that affordable section of the housing Sir. so yeah Yeah, exactly on the cost. This, if at all you get 54 EC and you can issue these uh, infra bonds, uh, by how much does it re- reduce your cost of funds? Just try to understand what is the benefit in terms of the uh, the interest rate differential that you will get if you are able to issue these bonds. Actually, if you see the weighted average, the effect may come after two to three years of the time because this year oh, we may okay. be targeting around two thousand crores or three thousand crores. Uh, there are uh, existing companies uh, who are bigger players than us, and uh, the total market of fifty-four EC is not more than eighteen thousand to twenty thousand crores. So, initial in initial years, uh, it may be two thousand. Then we will be extending towards the higher towards from marketing and the consumer satisfaction. All these measures has to be taken. uh to attract the 54 ec market and sir last point is on asset quality just 30 seconds left you've improved your gross npa from 2.4 to 2% is that with the help of high write offs what's the yeah, guidance on asset quality and whether write offs will continue to be high gross npa has came down to as good as 2% and the net npa is 0.31% and we had taken a commitment that uh, we will be resolving most of these assets by 2026 Uh, during this this uh, this physical also we had a target that we should be resolving another uh, 500 crores of the assets so it will be coming between 1.8 to 1.9 the 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 net npa and around 1.75 to 1.8% of the gross npa all right uh, we we'll leave it there uh, it's a pleasure sir thank you very much thank you so diwali much. greetings thank to you. Uh, you once again and I look Wishing forward to you a very very happy diwali to you and your viewers thank you so much thank you very much Namaskar. well i think